Well, we're starting with this lesson, the second level of spiritual maturity dynamics. And again, we have an A portion and a B portion in each of these lessons. And the A portion speaks to the principles of vision. The Bible tells us that without a vision, people perish. If I don't have a goal, if I don't feel like I have a purpose, I really don't know where I'm going. I really don't know what I'm doing. And so it's important to have vision. And in the first few lessons of the A portion, we're going to be talking about a vision that Ezekiel received in chapter 1 of the book of Ezekiel, verses 4 through 10, where he saw four massive beings in the midst of a windstorm. And they had four faces, you know, one on each side. One of an ox, one of a man, one of an eagle, and one of a lion. We're going to talk about four facets of vision based on this passage in the book of Ezekiel, which are also, these ideas are also mentioned in Revelation chapter 4. And so these are important elements of vision. And again, seeing how important vision is, we really want to make sure that we grasp this as we go forward in the calling that we have upon our lives. Because again, as believers, there is no calling to just sit in the church and let everybody else do the ministry. The Bible says that pastors are given, evangelists are given, prophets are given, teachers are given, apostles. They're given to the church to equip the members of the church to do the work of the ministry. And that includes you. All right? So you need to have a vision. I need to have a vision for what God's called me to do. And so our first lesson, lesson 1A of level 2, is called the four faces of the vision. And we're going to be talking about the ox. That sounds so exciting, doesn't it? The ox. I'm, I'm trying to think. There's like these cartoons where they have the ox. The ox always seems like to be this buff guy, you know, like all his muscles, right? But let's talk about the ox and see what... It signifies in, in, in the big picture of the vision. Matthew 11, verse 29 through 30 says this, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we think about oxen, that's the proper plural form for ox, oxen, we think about beasts of burden. They usually pulled plows, right, the, in the old days, not with all these fancy machines and stuff, but in the old days they'd be put on with a yoke and there'd be a couple of them and they would pull the plow and break up the earth so that the farmer could plant seed and grow a crop, okay? So we want to talk about what it means, but before we do that, let's just talk a little bit as a preface so I don't get ahead of myself. What is the significance of the four faces? Okay. A, Israel used these same four faces, right? They had them on the banners that they marched behind in the wilderness. And there were four tribes of the 12 that led the way in the march. And, and if, you, if you can see the picture, there was generally, there was three tribes that would go out. Right? And then some portion of the Levites would go. Then another three tribes would go out some more. And then there'd be Moses with the temple and the tabernacle stuff. And another three tribes and another, etc. Right? So there was these groups of three. But for each group of three, there was one predominant uh, tribe that led that group of three. One of them was called Judah, which is symbolized by the lion. Right? We know Ju Jesus is the lion of Judah. And then there was two tribes with them. Then came Reuben, who was uh, pictures the man, and there's two tribes. Then there's Ephraim, who represents the ox, which is the uh, topic of our lesson here today, and two more tribes, followed by Dan, the eagle, with two tribes. When all of these tribes were camped together, an interesting formation. So there'd be the temple in the middle, if I get this picture right, right? There'd be three tribes up here, three tribes over here, Three tribes over here, three tribes down here. Are you seeing the picture? A cross, huh? Which each group of three and either part of it here. So the cross is the central value. So these four faces, B, represent the four values of God's vision. Okay? So today, this lesson right here, 
we're going to talk about the face of the ox, which represents the concept of serving. Serving. Roman numeral two. What is the face of the ox? A, the face of the ox represents serving. John, thir John 13. Jesus gave us the best example of serving, right? When he washed the disciples' feet. I mean, we, again, we're... I can imagine the disciples were really, their minds were blown, if you want to call it that. Maybe they didn't call it that. But here's Jesus, really the guy that they all look to. I've been uh, uh, watching the, the, the show, The Chosen, and you're seeing, yes, they've got their personalities. They're very dominant people, whatever. But they really have this awe for, for Jesus. And here Jesus in this awe position is now bending down with a, you know, water, and he's washing their feet. And there was... Really, the, that was the lowest position in a household was the servant that washed feet. None of the other disciples wanted to have that job, right? And here's Jesus taking on. And we read in John 13, verses 14 through 17, says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, in other words, as I as the leader have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. What he's really saying here is, is if, if I as the master, if, if I as the one who is sending, right, am doing this serving, how much more should you who are a, are a servant or a messenger? Now that you have known these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Christ took upon himself the form of a servant. We find this in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, right? He, he, he did not hold on to his godly presence, his godly power, but came to earth and came to serve, right? He came to serve. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. I'm not here to rule, right? But I do rule as the son of God. But I'm, the example that I'm saying is that I'm serving. I'm giving of myself to you. Okay? B, brokenness is the secret of multiplication. Brokenness. Now, many animals are used in different things. Again, maybe not so predominantly as they once were. But there's still, the concept is still about, particularly, for example, I know we're talking about ox, but let's just more sidestep a little bit for a horse because I think people have more of a of a, a picture of that. They've seen it in movies, whatever, right? They're, the old westerns, um, the cowboys had gone out and they had lassoed some, some wild horses, some wild stallions, right? And they're inside those, those big old circular... Uh, compound type of things with the wooden little railings around. Everybody's kind of sitting on it or looking through it or whatever kind of thing. And some cowboy's got all his doodads on. He goes over there. The horse is just kicking and snorting and everything else, right? And the, and the cowboy's going to get on there for the express purpose of breaking the will of that horse. Not the spirit of the horse, but his the, the will of that the horse said, I'm going to do what I want to do. Are you catching what I'm trying to hit on here? I want to do what I want to do. That's not the heart of a servant. It's not the heart of a believer, a Christ-like follower, right? If I have my own will, I'm going to do things my way. I need to be broken so that all that I desire is God's will, right? When we're not broken, we're stubborn, we're rebellious. We're independent. Rather, we need to become faithful, loyal, and humble. Okay? An ox must be broken. It has a will, just like the horse did. It's not going to plow that field very well if it hasn't been broken. If it's still wild, right, you put the yoke on, you strap on your plow, you're just going everywhere. You can look in your field and it's got this, you know, really origami, dynamic, you know, kind of picture going on. It's not a, not a field with rows that you can really work with. So the ox has to be broken. It has to learn to surrender its will 
to the owner. Satan is arrogant and proud. He left heaven in rebellion. Lost people are disobedient because their hearts are hard. They are not yet broken. Brokenness comes from a revelation of the cross. This is a good evangelistic thought right here, right? The reason that people don't accept Christ or the reason people come into a church and raise their hand and get saved and then you never see them again is because they're still not broken. What breaks them? The recognition that they're lost. The recognition that they're a sinner. The recognition that they need a Savior. And Jesus died a horrible death on the cross on their behalf so that they can have a Savior. It breaks you. Brokenness comes from having a revelation of that cross. Your will needs to bend and then break in the same way Jesus allowed his will to be broken in saying, not my will, but yours be done. Submission to God's authority is essential. Brokenness is essential. Christ broke the blows of bread before he gave them out and they were multiplied. He also said in John 12, 24, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, is broken, it remains alone. If it's not broken, if it doesn't get in earth, and then the, 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 the process, I'm not going to get into the science here, but the process of it breaking down and then all that stuff happening and the sprout coming up, unless it's broken, it will just lay there doing nothing, accomplishing nothing. But once it dies, once it's broken, it produces much grain. Brokenness and death to your own stubborn, independent will will always come before multiplication can occur. Ooh, that's some good stuff right there. C, the ox is a worker in the harvest. He plows, right? He pulls the plow. Then he pulls the reaping machine. Then he pulls the machinery for the threshing of the crop. So one ox can produce an entire crop for the farmer. So the ox represents the work of an evangelist. Breaking up the hard ground, right? And then reaping the harvest. Matt, Jesus said in Matthew 9, 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And it's not that there's not a people available, but the actual ones that go out and do the work are few. The ox represents the patient, diligent work of a soul winner. And what is a soul winner doing? Listen to this. Listen to this. This is powerful. The soul winner is praying. The soul winner is cultivating relationships, especially with the lost. The soul winner is sowing spiritual seed. And then the soul winner is reaping the harvest. Okay? We're going to learn how to be fruitful soul winners through the concepts of prayer and witnessing as we go through this level two course of lessons. You're going to become a spiritual ox. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. D. Serving is the secret to winning souls. Oh, I bet you didn't know that. You just thought it was about telling them stuff, right? Showing them where they're wrong and you're right. Ooh, see, there's, that's not evangelism. Paul referred to the ox's threshing of the wheat and thus having a right to the harvest in 1 Corinthians 9.9. 9. Okay, he said in verse 19, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. You see, Paul knew the secret of winning the lost was by serving. It could be giving them food, being hospitable, spending time with them, ministering to their needs, right? There's that saying that says, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. Do I know you really care? And if I know that you really care, then my heart starts to become open to hear what you know. You will win people to the Lord when you serve them. When you serve them, okay? When you serve them in practical ways, it opens up their heart to hear the message that God has placed upon you and given you the responsibility for. And this is what we call servant evangelism. It's the ox in action. You see, God has a big vision for the entire world. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Not one single person. 
He wants every single person on the planet to come to know Jesus, to spend eternity with him. He wants them all to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we have the wonderful privilege of sharing God's vision with those who don't even know him yet. Some of them don't even know anything about him. And this vision that we're talking about has four faces or values. And the first value, again, that we've talked about today is serving others, like the hardworking, faithful ox who has been broken and is ready to do the work of the ministry, serving the master, Jesus Christ, in the harvest that he has prepared. We, we didn't necessarily prepare it. The Bible says you know, that some plant, some water, but God brings the increase. God creates the harvest. He's doing the work. Our pastor recently mentioned something about, you know, that sometimes we go out uh, about sharing with other people about Jesus, thinking that we're out there on our own. Like we just got to break the ground and somehow get something in there. No, God, if we're doing it right, God is already preparing people. And that's one of the things we're going to learn about is preparing people's heart, not by the things we say and do only, even though we're talking about serving, but also talk, you know, talking about praying and seeking God to begin the work that only he can do in preparation for the seed we planted, okay? All right, so we need to allow God to break us. We need to be willing to take on the yoke of service to others because this is the very best way to win the lost, to win those that are outside of the grace of God to Jesus Christ. And I know that you know that is the great commission, the great responsibility that each and every one of us as believers have to fulfill. And so I encourage you, serve others, open doors, do the work of an evangelist.